Control flow means uh, that's when you tell your uh, your code what to do in uh, in different uh, situations. You know, when uh, you've probably seen uh, if else, uh, you have stuff like that in uh, in other programming languages. And uh, Rust uh, also has uh, if and else. It has a, a whole bunch of other things, but uh, it's best to start with that. <clears throat> and uh, you know, let's just go with something simple. So let's say you have a, uh, a number, and then you do uh, if my number equals uh, seven, and with if you um, you don't uh, you don't put this in brackets. You just uh, have if and then the uh, the condition, and then uh, we'll print uh, it's seven. And so you can see this this will do nothing because uh, whoops. There we go. Of course, you need the uh, the two equals for uh, for comparing equality. So there you go. And uh, if it equals nine, oh, wait. Well, if it equals nine, well, that's the way we wrote it. So yeah, it's uh, it's seven. So if nine equals nine, then it prints seven. Uh, after that, you can have. Uh, no else and else is also uh, basically the same so let my number equals basically the same as in uh, you know other programming languages so uh, my number equals uh, let's go with seven so we print <clears throat> it's seven and then uh, so you know we start here we end here and this is where you put your else and then uh, Let's see, actually, else if uh, my number equals six, and then we will say it is six, and then we can have an else for all the other cases, and we will say uh, it's something else. So let's make this a 17. And there you go, something else. So it's pretty easy, it checks this, and then if this is not the case, then it checks this. And if, if, if that's not the case, for everything else, it'll do, you know, it's something else. And you can have, um, if you want more than one condition, you can have, uh, you no know, condition one, one and condition two. And uh, for or, you have these two, uh, these two bars. So condition one or condition two. So let's say uh, this next one, I'm just going to uh, copy and paste it in because it's pretty pretty straightforward. So we have that my number equals five. And if, uh, oh right, this is the uh, modulo, by the way. So you divide by two and get the remainder. So if the remainder is one and my number is greater than zero, then it'll say it's a positive odd number. Else if, uh, you know, it's equal to this, else, it'll say it's a different number. So there you go, it's a positive odd number. So don't forget there's two of them. Two of them here, two of them here, and that is uh, modulo. And so, uh, you know, up to now, that is uh, pretty, uh, pretty much the same as uh, all your, you know, C type or like, uh, or Python type uh, languages. The, uh, the more fun thing, this is where the fun part starts. Uh, it's called match. So we have a match statement. And there we go. That's how this works. So let my number, let's uh, let's make it a U8. <clears throat> and we're making it a U8 for, uh, for a reason. But uh, let's say, okay, my number, if, it, uh, if it's eight, we'll say uh, it's an eight. And then you put a comma after these, and then 10. It's a 10. And this will actually not work. And here's the reason why. So non-exhaustive pattern. A non-exhaustive means uh, you didn't think of everything. So it's, uh, it's saying, OK, we. Uh, you told me what to do with eight, but what about zero? What about one, two, three? What about seven? And then what about nine? And then what about 11? 
up to a U8 max. So that's the uh, the maximum size of a U8, which is uh, you know 200. And what was it? I forget. 240 something. And so what you do here in this case, of course, you can write out every one. In the case of one, blah blah blah. In the case of two, blah blah blah. But uh, if you don't care about the rest, you use the uh, the underscore, and then you can uh, hit something else. I forgot the comma. There you go. It's something else. So that is how. Uh, <clears throat> that's what match looks like, and a uh, a match. Um, Kind of looks like a switch statement in uh, other languages, but it's uh, there's a lot more uh, interesting things you can do to it. For example, you can declare a variable. So you can say uh, let uh, I don't know, plus two equals match my number. <clears throat> uh, actually, I don't want to call it plus two. I'll just call it something. So. We are declaring a variable, and if my number is 8, then it'll be 10, and if my number is 10, it'll be 200, and if it's something else, it'll be 55. I don't know why, but that's why. That's what we're doing. And let's see what it is. Something. That's right. After let, you need a semicolon. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, you can use match statements to uh, to declare variables, and uh, that is really cool. I think uh, you can also um, you can match tuples, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. So this example here is uh, okay. The sky is cloudy, and let uh, temperature equals warm. And let's say we want to, to do a match on uh, the sky and the temperature. So you can do this. Sky temperature. And then the rest of it I'm going to paste in because I'm lazy today. And uh, so there you go. We have, uh, so we're matching on a tuple. And here you can have, uh, you know, if cloudy and cold, You'll uh, print that as dark and unpleasant. If it's clear and warm, you print this, cloudy and warm. Uh, and of course, you will definitely need this because uh, there are so many other possible stirs that uh, you know you'll absolutely need to have this. Let's see, match sky temperature. What's the problem? There we go. Okay, so this gives us, uh, it's dark, but it's not bad because it's cloudy, but it's warm. So yeah, uh, that is how that works. And uh, another cool thing about uh, match statements is you can put uh, you can put if inside of them. So the next, uh, next example shows this. So let's say uh, we're talking about, let's put a Boolean in here this time. So children are five and married are true. And we are going to match on children and married. And uh, so first we are going to, actually I'll show you this first. So this will be enough to finish the, uh, the match statement. And that's kind of interesting because, uh, you know, if we uh, actually let's put something there. <clears throat> so we're matching children and married. And if we get children married, which we 100% of the time will get, then it will print that. So, uh, you know, that's not useful yet, but you can put an if inside there. And now we get the, uh, the more interesting statement. So if, uh, if married, um, and then uh, let's see, children married, and I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to paste because it's a lot. There we go. Um, so if you are, you know, we bring these two in, 
So if married is false, then uh, you write, you know, not married with uh, children. So you have children and married. And then the next one is uh, you know, children married. If uh, children equals zero and married equals true, then you have married but no children. And then after that, let's say, uh, you know, we just want to print out the, uh, the information for, uh, for anything else. So then we say married, number of children, and then we bring in, you know, we have married and children here, and we can actually, uh, we can print them out inside the statement. So there you go, married, true, number of children, five. And so a match statement is, uh, it'll go down the list until it finds, uh, until it finds a match. So if we had, uh, you know, if we typed a bunch of stuff here and this was a match, then this would be uh, the, the place where it would stop and it would not uh, not look at this and it would not look at this. So it's kind of like a, uh, a machine. You put the coin in and then, you know, it, uh, if, it, if it falls into a hole, then, uh, you know, that's the end of it. It's not going to uh, check the size of the, uh, of the rest of the, of the coin machine. And then... Uh, Yeah, I think that's enough for now. I'll, uh, we'll look at uh, the match statements a little bit more in the next video because this is uh, it's pretty uh, pretty fun and uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff to learn.